My friends, I have an amazing update for you today. There will be no more talks about how long my hair has gotten and how stupid it looks because I have finally let my wife cut my hair. That's right. So no more of those updates, but I have even better news. Today on the Fantasy Network, we're going to be reviewing two spectacular books, and they are the follow-up to John Gwynn's Malice in the Faithful and the Fallen series, book two and three, which are Valor and Ruin. Uh, I was going to break them out to separate reviews, but it is the middle of the series. It's a four, four book series. So I figured why not just get the middle all done in one shot. And uh, I'm pretty pumped up to talk about it. So without further ado, let's go nuts. So I want to start off by saying if you haven't checked out my Malice review, which is book one in the Faithful and the Fallen series by John Gwynn, please go ahead and check it out. I'll throw a card up here. And uh, if you want to continue to follow me uh, along my journey in the Banished Lands, because I will be reading the follow-up trilogy to this main series that's four books long, please go ahead and hit subscribe. And if you enjoy the video, hit like. Um, I don't like to harp on that stuff too much, but it does help me and motivate me to continue to make these videos. With that said, <laughs> it's time to get into Valor in Ruin books two and three. And I wanna talk a little bit about why I decided to combine these two book reviews. Um, I feel like it makes sense to take the middle of the series, which this is perfect, just two and three out of four, and kind of give you an overall arcing idea of what's going on in the story without spoiling it. And also the things that I really enjoyed because in a lot of series, the middle is where we slump. We get the sequel slump. Happens all the time. I felt that way in the Mistborn series that I read. I felt like book two was a little weaker with a strong finish. That is not at all the case here. Ruin and Valor, uh, or Valor and Ruin in that proper order, are two tales of the same story of the overarching plot that we have, but they are so different in what they deliver to us as the reader. So starting with Valor, I felt like this follow-up to Malice and being book two, it had, had a lot to live up to because if you go back to Malice, you'll, you'll see that I loved pretty much every single thing about that book. And Valor took all of that and then expanded on it and made it just even more, um, you know, gripping. Within the first 40 to 50 pages of the book, I literally looked around and audibly gasped at two moments within 50 pages. So that pace that we've talked about with John Gwen, uh, just being a rapid fire hitter, it continues that. The one critique I thought people might be able to have when it came to Malice was the fact that the the setup to the story could have been considered slow, even though there were a lot of things happening and the chapters moved along rather quickly. Uh, Valor does not suffer from that at all. So if you were a little bit timid after book one and you felt like there was a lot of setup, this is where John really starts to tell the story that he wanted to tell. We have established places within the Banished Lands and we've established a lot of people. And then we start to get some new POVs in Valor. And from there, the pedal is to the metal. It's, it's through the floor. I think the combat scenes were excellent in Malice, and I think they actually even got better through Valor. And I thought some of the characters that we were introduced to got really fleshed out uh, throughout not just the battles, but moving all over in the, in the map and in the world. And as I mentioned, there's new POVs, and I thought the new POVs were gladly welcomed. Uh, that's something that he continued in Ruin as well. But it's specifically in Valor, we had a lot of fallout from book one, and we got to see what happened after these jaw-dropping sequences from a whole new perspective and a new set of eyes. And I gladly welcomed it, I absolutely adored it. And with being spoiler free, there's not too much I can say about the plot other than the fact that it is moving and the stakes are even feeling higher and higher, which they were already ridiculously high in book one. Uh, Gwen maintained uh, that level of epicness in book two and then again, made it even more intriguing through different characters, new settings, and uh, just different set of circumstances. I thought Gwen had an opportunity within this second book to really expand on some of those private conversations that someone would have with themselves when they're going through some of these trials and tribulations and he was able to capture that and I thought we got a little more fleshed out as far as what our characters motivations are and what really is driving the story forward. And the one thing I want to talk about this in the Malice review and I want I decided to save it. I decided to save it for further reviews because I wanted to see what happened. And there's something that John Gwynn does not just battle wise but um, which I, I, I've kind of said I think he's the top echelon when it comes to combat in the fantasy genre, but he does something else that no other fantasy author has done quite as well that I have ever read. And it's something that uh, Gurm had done in Game of Thrones with the Wolves, 
but again, Gwen kind of expanded on this idea, and it's the fact that there are multiple pieces of wildlife that are in the story that, like for instance, there is talking, there are talking birds, right? Uh, kind of like in uh, Game of Thrones, whenever the crow sang snow, 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 same idea, but it's expanded on a little bit, but it doesn't feel hokey and it doesn't feel childish. Um, I kind of felt like his dark materials, that kind of took me out of the story and it was such a core element of that story that it, it kind of ruined it for me, to be honest with you. That's not the case here. And as someone who doesn't even enjoy animals that talk, uh, the talking birds in this actually, I enjoy them. I, I feel like they make sense somehow in this world. And I absolutely love the other pieces of wildlife that we saw as well. There are wolves. So if you're a big wolven fan, uh, I know most Game of Thrones people are. They're wolves and they're pretty fantastic in this series. And I thought the other, not just wildlife, and, and there's more wildlife than just that. There's uh, John Gwynn's take on dragons, which are called dregs. And they can't fly, but they're still just as epic and monstrous, but a little bit more down to earth, figuratively and literally. And there's also worms, uh, massive worms. And I've always wondered, is that the right way to say it? W y r m s is it worms if not let me know that in the comments if i'm an idiot but i just pronounce it worms when i read it uh but giant worms that are you know good enough to 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 take out a, a horse or a man so those are pretty epic and there's tons of other wildlife and, and you'll see when you read the book but i just thought that it has such a big piece to play not only in the story but in the world that john's building and that really set the set the tone for book two. This world in the Banished Lands feels like it's breathing. It feels alive. And it's partly because of how well the wildlife is uh, depicted here in the story. And it's something that is going to kind of spoil me. And I think the next stories I move on to that have wildlife, I think the bar set extremely high for them and Gwen mastered it. Along with uh, multiple variations of wildlife that come into play, there's also a lot of ancestry in here. And I didn't really talk about it in the Malice review again, because I wanted to see where it went, but like we have giants, but not just giants. We're talking about giants with a rich heritage. You could write probably a standalone series just on the giants lineage and how these different tribes have broken up and how they're, they kind of hate one another, but all together they hate this other group of people more. And it's just really fascinating to see, again, in that world building, um, this forgotten land uh, before these humans came and these exiles came and then you also have angels and demons. I mean, it doesn't get any more epic than that. And again, it's not in an overbearing, like preachy way, but in a, this is how this world was shaped and this is the reality that we're telling the story in. Uh, man, Gwen has just taken his world building to the next level in Valor and then even more so into Ruin. And before I start talking about Ruin, I also wanna note that the end of Valor is another misty-eyed ending uh, and not actually even the most misty-eyed part of the whole series, but he is making bold decisions for his characters, and he is, ah, uh, man, this, it's heart-wrenching. It's heart-wrenching to read some of these parts of these stories because the characters are so well done and well-crafted. I think this is one of the best examples of characters in fantasy, and again, some of the bold decisions that John Gwen has made during this series have uh, ripped my heart out and stomped it on into the ground, but I keep reading and I'm so glad I did because now I can talk about the pieces of Ruin that I really liked. And it is such a monumental piece of the series and such an important pillar in what John Gwen's telling. So if Valor was a book that raised the stakes through battle, I think Ruin is the book that where we see a bit of a payoff for the bold decisions that he's made for the deaths that we've incurred in all of the the just the terrible things that keep happening to these characters that we love. These are character defining moments. Ruin takes a bit of a step back in my opinion and in the best possible way. It, there's still tons of battles. It's a John Gwen book. It's gonna have amazing combat and just dope fight scenes. But this is where he kind of slowed down and there were moments in this book where if he had not landed them, the series becomes mediocre. Because when you take the stakes and you put them that high and you make these bold decisions, if you don't pay it off, if, if you don't, if you put the heat on the good guy the whole time, and then when it's time for that good guy to have that moment to where he says, this is who I am and this is what I must do, if you can't convince the reader that that is believable, if they can't feel that in their chest when they're reading, 
you've missed out. You've missed out. You could have an amazing setup, but if the payoff isn't there, I just don't feel like you can be considered great. I don't think the series could be considered great. Ruin did that, and it was at a sacrifice of slowing down a little bit, but again, it was it was kind of welcome. You get to catch your breath, and you got these just... Uh, I don't even want to say epic, because it's not epic. It's more than that. I felt like in this book, we had two moments that stood out, that were character defining, that were arc defining for these characters. And I felt it in my chest. Like I felt it, you know, I, I got up off the couch and just had to take a breath, take a walk, reread the chapter. Let me tell you, that doesn't always happen. There's times where I'll go through a series and I'll love it. Uh, and I won't reread any chapters. Um, I put it on the back, back on the shelf and I say, I'll pick it up in a few years and stuff like that. But there, I think I've read one, chapter 64 three times because I felt it and I felt it every single time. And when a book can take you out of just reading and get you to feel and get you to identify with the tone of the scene, I think that is what makes something a masterpiece. And Ruin was nothing short of a masterpiece and it gave you these moments. It gave you such a good moment. I felt, I said, is there a book four? <laughs> because it feels like we're wrapping up everything pretty damn well. The last 100 pages are an absolute uh, mind blower, barn burner. I, I think it's possibly, I think, and again, Malice and Valor are excellent books. I give them four and a half or maybe even five stars out of five. I did on Goodreads. Ruin is better. Ruin is better because of the groundwork we laid in books one and two, and it paid it off while still twisting and turning. So just when, when he makes you think that he has you all locked away, you got it all figured out, he changes the game. When you got the answer, he changes the questions, as Roddy Piper used to say. And I, I couldn't love it anymore. And again, heart-wrenching. I thought we were good. I thought we were out of the woods. And by the end of the book, when you read the final pages, um, I don't know. If you don't have tears in your eyes, I, I don't know if you have a heart. Because it tore me up. The story is going in a totally different direction. And I love it. I love how it has now evolved past something... Um, that would can be considered tropey, and you'll know what I mean whenever you read The End of Ruin. But I think he's, again, making a massively brave decision, not just with the characters now, but with the whole story. And he has put himself in a position in Wrath to pay it off. And if he does, I'm so excited to see what he does with Wrath. I'm only one, one chapter in, and it's already great. But uh, I'm so excited to see how he sticks this landing because I don't know if there's ever been a story that I've been this attached to that's finished. Uh, a Song of Ice and Fire is my favorite series of all time, but it's not finished. John Gwen is about to finish this. And then I have the follow-up, uh, the sequel trilogy, which I'm obviously gonna read, even if the ending was just terrible. If it was season eight Game of Thrones bad, I'd still read it. Three. Ooh, stink bug. Combating a stink bug, sorry. But I think we're hitting the points in the story that John Gwynn stayed up at night writing uh, out, maybe when he was planning out the story. We, we got the moments that he wanted to give us and wanted to tell, and it came across the pages beautifully. Ruin was a 6 out of 5, in my opinion, and a must-read. Um, if you don't read anything else um, this year, I think you should owe it to yourself to read Malice, Valor, and Ruin, and I have very, very high hopes for Wrath, um, which I hope to get read by my next review. And just going to the last book, I kind of want to record this. I just, um, this series is very special to me. In the world right now, it's a little bit of a weird time, and um, I think having an escape is really important, and these books have given it to me. I don't know. I'm just really excited to see where it goes. I'm almost a little scared for it to be over, even though we do have other books um, in the universe. I would love to talk more. I could literally probably do an hour uh, for a video like this because there's just so many things that flip and flop. And, hey, and if, if you felt like Mouse is a little too on the nose for you, if you felt like you saw a lot of the things coming, I will tell you right now that the deceit and just the twist Sometimes it's okay to see things coming because then whenever something happens that you don't, it means more. And I think that's a piece of storytelling that John Gwynn has nailed. He's absolutely nailed because there are some turns and twists here that just you don't see coming. And if you're into that kind of thing, I think you absolutely have to read this series. The tagline on the front of the novels say, even the brave, even the brave will fall. Couldn't be a truer statement.
But let me know, are you guys reading it? Um, is this something you're gonna pick up? Uh, I couldn't recommend it anymore, so if you've enjoyed my videos thus far and you're looking for a recommendation or you're a big fan of Song of Ice and Fire, I think, I think you would love this series. So again, I highly recommend it. This obviously is getting the Golden Acorn Award. It's gonna be in the top books at the end of the year. But thank you so much for taking time to listen to me just go off about this series and love it. Get out there, go read it, go buy it. Um, and again, I just really appreciate taking your time to check out the channel. If you enjoyed it, hit subscribe, smash like, it helps me out. And I would just love to get a community going and maybe even start a read along or a book club podcast uh, for the faithful and the fallen because we have seven books in that universe. And I think there's a lot to dive into there. I would love to see if maybe John would like to come on the channel. I would love to get an interview with him and ask him. I have about a million things I want to ask him. I definitely need to finish Wrath first, though. I hope you all are well, and until next time, keep reading, my friends.